Well, there is no countdown actually. It just now tells me that we're live. So hello everyone. <laughs> Second time we've done a conversation with one of the team members for Resonate. Uh, today presenting Ian Warner, who is our lead designer and branding guru and is the author of the blockchain diagram that we've started to really incorporate throughout the um, the site. And I'm hoping that if I can click the correct button inside the Hangouts here, I'll get to show you what this is if, in case you're not familiar with it. So One seven hopefully seven. We're, you're seeing it now, Ian? No, yeah. Mm -hmm. OK. So there it is. That's the blockchain graphic that um, Ian designed. And uh, I just wanted to you know, get some little backstory on how that came about for you. Um, where did you uh, get the inspiration for, for that image? Yeah, good question. Um, I don't know where the inspiration comes from, but I think um, sometimes it just uh, you know, materializes in front of you. And, um, but I think I'm, it's my nature in some way when looking at uh, design problems, uh, communication design problems, um, to look for something which is uh, almost systematic. In, in some way. Um, and by that I mean when you develop um, a corporate design, it's usually based on some kind of a rule set. And this rule set is based on a, usually on a pretty big manual, and then there's a certain colors you can use, and there's a certain grid you can use. Um, so if you kind of um, work backwards from this idea of working with a rule set, it's sometimes it's possible to arrive at um, shapes and forms which. Um, you couldn't have thought of just if you sat down with a pen and paper. So, um, I mean, the blockchain was, uh, it's kind of, uh, for me, it's still a bit of a, a magic black box. <laughs> for a lot of people, I think, too. <laughs> yeah, that makes it very seductive, I think. And um, so, I mean, I just started reading about the blockchain really on a very um, structural level. I wanted to know what, what is a block and, and why is it a chain? Um, and because, of course, it's a, uh, you know, it's a, if it's, um, it's going to be an algorithm anyway. And um, so this sort of brings me back to this idea about uh, designing with sets of rules rather than designing like uh, you might imagine um, an artist having a flash of inspiration. You know? So, um, and reading about the blockchain, there was this, uh, I just became very interested in the actual structure, you know, the fact that each block contains um, some kind of a record of the, let me think, is it the preceding? Yeah, this is a test on me now. I can't remember if it's the preceding block or the, the next block. So that's the idea is actually that the whole chain contains a record of every single transaction within it. So, and this was the, the thing which um, really set me off looking for um, a, visual, a visual answer to that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's kind of interesting too that it, happened uh, much later um you yeah. know we, we'd had the site up for almost a year i think before yeah. you that, that that image came to you so yeah. in this case maybe having it percolate a little longer helped yeah yeah i think it did yeah i mean sometimes um you're working under uh, very very tight deadlines and then you're, you're forced to um, um to follow certain strategies very um uh, in a rigid, fairly rigid way, or just, and so here I think uh, resonate really started for me with more of um, something like an atmosphere. Um, mm. That we we're dealing with an idea which is going to be, which is kind of new, which has this potential to really um, uh, turn people's ideas of how music distribution is around, you know, on, on its head in a way. And thirdly, it was using this blockchain technology, which is this. Uh, huge buzz around it but with most people uh, most mortals not actually knowing what that entails so for me it was this idea of okay there's this new thing and it really is actually a black box and that seemed to me to be something which was yeah like i said before somehow uh, enigmatic um, so for me it was like it was a mood and i really wanted to capture this mood with um, actually some with a, basically a set of colors which you just wouldn't really see so often so we had this I and mean, we had a pale gray, and then we had this pale gray combined with this really kind of evil-looking, sort of uh, citrusy yellow, and then 
And then there was, we had a kind of a lilac in there as well. And I don't know, there was just, yeah, it's a feeling somehow. And I, there was something kind of weird and, um, yeah, weird and seductive about that color combination. Yeah, I remember you talking about this very early on, that, that you actually picked the color palette, not specifically because it was, you know, like you weren't, you weren't going for something kind of generic and corporate and pleasing, but you were going for something that was a little bit edgy and maybe made you feel a little uncomfortable, <laughs> which I thought was a very interesting strategy. And then this conversation as well, yeah. And it was like this thing um, where, I mean, I've been designing for quite a long time, and so you do get into routines as well. And it's, um, it's a very difficult thing to surprise yourself by things you're doing yourself, you know. So by routine, I realized by that, I mean there's a certain <clears throat> group of, um, I don't know, typefaces which I'm comfortable using or a certain, um, certain part of a color palette which I'm comfortable using. So in this case with Resonate, I really wanted to find something which I wasn't even comfortable with because I thought, okay, if I'm not comfortable with it, then there's a lot of, um, uh, yeah, haha, it's a joke now, but there's a lot of resonance around uh, those, uh, um, those colors, you know, which is, and I think it was something about resonate which is um also has a political underpinning and i think it's this idea of agitating as well through a uh, use of colors which people might sort of at first um uh, feel a little uncomfortable with or might sort of um also be seduced by because they think okay if i accept these colors then i'm in some kind of a club of people who accept these weird colors so it was about belonging as well yeah and i and i think that that these issues are going to get even more challenging as time goes on because one of the goals that we've got is to make something that's really flexible for all music communities and we're we've we've got some um pockets starting to develop um around certain labels and artists that have come in you know there's i think electronica is the the biggest genre at the moment um but there's a nice little section of jazz as well mm. And um, there's been a small but very encouraging um, little surge in recruitment around hip hop um, mm -hmm. coming out of the uh, the southeast, um, like uh, uh, Dollar Black and Misfit Entertainment. I think you're both out of um, Mississippi, mm -hmm. and so there's a huge challenge there. And I yeah. I really wouldn't want to be in your shoes um, when it comes to you know how do you present something that's going to appeal to wildly different music communities. Exactly, yeah. Yeah, that's a big challenge. Um, I think it's one of these things where you need to do a kind of a, a jujitsu move and you know, not, uh, not maybe fight it with your own strengths, but sort of tackle the problem by looking at the weaknesses of the problem, you know what I mean? Like, if the guy coming towards you, then the best thing to do is maybe just duck or step aside rather than you know, punching into him. So there's different ways of dealing with that kind of um, uh, that kind of a problem, and I think here it's probably really about. Um, it could even be about one single thing. You know, if we start looking at the competition, then you'll see that they're identified by one very particular color, and they become completely identified with that one color without right. the competition. But you know what I mean. Um, and um, the rest is basically, I guess, very neutral in the sense that uh, the, the central app itself has to be. Um, uh, neutral to a certain extent in terms of its color palette um, because you're also dealing with the artworks which are um, you know, synonymous with labels or synonymous with uh, even certain artists as well. Right. Certainly, I mean, thinking just to, in terms of my own um, way of uh, consuming music, I'm very much label orientated. It's just how I sort of got into listening to music, thinking in terms of these uh, stables of musicians. Um, so. Uh, I think that kind of identity, which goes with a label or an artist, is going to be very, very um, important. So I think that should be a, it's a, a strategy which we should follow as well. And also, of course, within app design, um, most of the identity comes up through um, um, the user experience, you know, the UX of the app, rather than anything it particularly does graphically. So it's also it's coming back to this thing: does a thing feel good or feel bad? Or what uh, what can the app surprise me with? How can it anticipate my needs? So you get an identity for this kind of thing. So it's not just the the whole burden isn't on the visual, but it's also on the actual way um, that something works and feels. Yeah, because it's it's really uh, different too. You get something like Facebook, which presents this really kind of monotonous, generic uh, blue yeah. that 
has its stink all over everything. Um, and then you have, uh, on the other hand, Twitter, which allows for a great deal of user customization. And so the thing's shifting. And, but you know you're still on Twitter because there are certain structures to the interface and everything. Um, That's right. So uh, I, it seems like we're probably leaning more in that direction when it comes to how the, the app's going to function and such. Um, I wanted to talk about the logo a minute because I think this is something that, that uh, not a lot of people know the story or philosophy around that. And, I, and I, I think it's a great example of this really being a cooperative because I sort of see that there were three key voices and how that emerged. And it started off with Norman Palm of Fairdick Design, um, who's known uh, locally here in Berlin for doing things like the Torstrassen Festival. And he's also the lead designer for Republica and um, lots of other um, lots of other projects on the uh, arts and culture scene. And so his first take on it was, was to create the parentheses. And what yeah. he told me um, about that was that what it signified to him was that it, you are the thing that goes in between. It's like mm -hmm. you, you are what sits in between that. Yeah. Um, and then a lot of the, uh, the, the examples that he gave me were, they were all t uh, uh, block letters. So it was all very big and bold. Mm -hmm. And then um, I think Maria at some point jumped in on, on finding the Averta font. And then I remember you kind of being the last stage in that with um, suggesting that it should stay lowercase. And yeah. I, I wish I could find the text that you sent me. <laughs> Uh, do, you, do you remember what you said? Because it was like it was like the most philosophical thing I'd ever seen about typography. <laughs> <laughs> I must have written some kind of a screed. I don't actually remember what I what I said. I would still stand by uh, uh, stand by the results for sure. But um, um, I think um, I mean just thinking back to it now, really formally these uh, these parentheses. I mean I. Thought it was such a, a great idea because I was struggling in parallel with some to come up with something for Resonate as well, and um, for me it also had to do with something which is uh, really vibrating. So in that sense, I was looking for something probably too literal. But I mean, parentheses are amazing because they. Uh, um, I mean, first of all, they do look like something's resonated. They have this characteristic of you know expanding sound waves from some point. Yeah. But then, of course, you've got this void in the middle of the, uh, the logo, which is um, kind of a, I don't know, a counterintuitive thing to do. I really like that. But um, I think just typographically, I mean, I can't remember exactly what I wrote in the mail, but typographically, I think the parentheses are, um, are good in combination with the, the lowercase lettering because they stand out more. It's just, just as simple as that. I think as soon as you had it with uppercase, things became somehow more stiff and more obviously um, maybe about maybe, maybe more obviously about technology but I think uh, resonate has to be in the end about the community rather than the technology the technology of course has to run the background but uh, Absolutely. About, uh, this kind of so it's these varying letter forms you know that kind of thing. It's different varying heights in the name and there was something something, something more friendly about it as well mm -hmm. I'll have to have a look at that email now <laughs> I hope you can find it because I, I think it's lost, lost into the void. <laughs> so, anything else that you kind of would love to share with uh, the the community as far as um, your involvement on the project, how, you, how, where you think it's going? I mean, just any any random thoughts. Random thoughts. Well, I'm involved in a lot of other projects as well with my company, State. So we're currently um, reworking the corporate design of the Komische Oper in Berlin, which is one of Berlin's three opera houses. Mm -hmm. uh, it's, a, it's a great client and it's nice work. And we've got this amazing challenge of having to redesign their corporate design for the coming five years. So we've had this, uh, in this wonderful position where we've been working with them for five years and we're about to work with them uh, for the next five years. And it's basically, you know, how do you, it's, it feels like fixing something which isn't broken. So it's a, it's a really hard nut to crack um, design-wise because it's like, if it's not broken, don't fix it. So it's like, uh, what do you do then? 
you know. So this is an exciting big project which I'm just working on right at the moment. And also, actually, I just um, scribbled something down just before we started chatting because I was um, thinking about. Um, I mean, if people are, who are watching this are really interested in uh, design and design thinking, then um, if they don't know him already, um, then they should definitely check out uh, Karl Gerstner, who is um, a really big influence on me. And he actually wrote a book. I think it was back in the '60s. I couldn't tell you exactly which year. And the book was called Programming Design. And, um, Gerstner was this guy who was working in this amazing time in post-war Europe where people who, um, you know, designers who had a very kind of, um, I guess, free-ranging artistic spirit were doing very, very big corporate work. And um, um, so Carl Gerstner, he was really an artist at heart, but he ended up doing things like logos for Deutsche Bank. And uh, in his book, Designing um, Programming Design, Programmergestalten, it's called in German. Um, he reveals all these different ways of working, really, with design algorithms and algorithms which you can, as a designer, implement by hand. You know, so you don't need to code anything. You can, and that's basically where what I was also thinking of. I think when I was doing the the blockchain key visual for Resonate as well. It's um, there is an algorithm behind it, but you have to fulfill this algorithm by hand, which is kind of a, an odd thing to do. You know, sitting there with a computer, which could actually do it for you. So. Um, definitely, Carl Gerstner. People should check him out if they didn't know him already. Okay, cool. Well, thanks so much for having a little chit chat. Um, you're just across town, but uh, both of us having busy schedules, it's easier to do it this way and get, sure. get it recorded into uh, the Google Tube thing. So um, we will uh, be seeing more work in the uh, the coming weeks and months yeah. as we gear up for the crowd campaigns hopefully some more interesting visuals coming from you and uh, when you're when you're able to throw in a little bit of time not um, so busy with uh, all those projects that are actually paying your bills <laughs> hopefully hopefully that, that there will be something coming in from us eventually so uh, anyway thanks a lot Ian oh sure, you're welcome we'll uh, see you again next time folks all right. Bye-bye.